Welcome to the Proven Winners Display Garden at Four Star Greenhouse. Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. Plan friends, not only are we lucky enough to just be here at Four Star Greenhouse, which is the home of Proven Winners Plants, but we are here with Ian, who is the designer of this amazing garden we're in. So Ian, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for Four Star Greenhouse and Proven Winners? So it's pretty much my job to show off our plants as best as I can. Um, we get to play around with the um, new plants for next season. Um, kind of test out color combinations, see how plants work together, and uh, pretty much show off the Proven Winners brand as best as we can. And what's your title here? Uh, signature Display Garden Designer, uh, but Garden Designer suits me just fine. <laughs> and, we are <laughs> and we are in this huge, how large would you say this garden is? It's an acre and a half. An acre and a half that you're entirely in charge of, and it is mind-blowing. So how did you become a garden designer? What's your history with, with gardening? I worked for a landscaping company up on Mackinac Island okay. uh, j for Jack Barnwell um, mm -hmm. for five years while I was going to school and I have a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, from the University of Michigan. Um, wow! So I ended up here as a grower for a bit and then worked out here a few summers and now I'm here. And now you're just designing gardens, no big deal. Yeah, kind of kind of happened. So I believe in being an indoor and an outdoor person, I think that there are more connections between indoor and outdoor gardening. You don't just have to be a houseplant enthusiast or an outdoor gardening enthusiast. And I feel like lately there's been a lot of talk of maybe some outdoor landscaping plants that maybe us houseplant people could bring indoors and keep as houseplants. Absolutely. And maybe I've heard that you have maybe a list of plants you could share with us on maybe some proven winners we could bring indoors. I think we got a couple. All right, cool. Okay, so I feel like when people talk about outdoor plants that are like becoming more and more popular as indoor plants, coleus is always the one that is the first name to be thrown in the mix. And this is what coleus look like outdoors, which is probably a little too large and a little too unruly for, for indoors. But will you tell us how you use them as a landscape plant? So as a landscape plant, I mean, this one right here is three, three plants. Um, so this wow, one, only three plants. Okay. Yeah, so this is one of our largest landscape varieties mm -hmm. um, that was new this spring. It's like really good coleus breeding, mm -hmm. but it's maybe not the best uh, for using indoors. Okay. Um, so we do have some smaller ones and some really cool kind of uh, trailing, kind of moundy uh, coleus that are a little bit smaller and a little easier to handle and would make great houseplants. And how do coleus thrive outdoors? Outdoors, uh, the ones for proven winners, you can put them basically anywhere. Okay. And all you have to do is make sure they have enough water. Okay, so they don't um, need like a certain amount of light. Because I see these really bright colors, and sometimes I know that a bright color for at least houseplants indicates more light being to, needed. Uh, traditionally, coleus were actually shade plants. Okay. Um, and Which our, makes sense that you could bring them indoors because any indoor environment is going to be a lot less light than outdoors. That's the idea. And then our landscape ones are bred for more full sun, mm -hmm. um, so they can do the whole range. Okay. Um, Will you show me, this is obviously one of your larger landscape options. Will you show me maybe some of the smaller house, more house planty options that we could maybe use? Absolutely. Cool. This is coleus. Sure is. This looks a lot different than the other plant we were just standing next to. Sure does. Look at this thing. Holy moly. So yeah. this looks like it has smaller leaves. Would a smaller version of this plant make a good house plant? Absolutely. Wow. And if I was to bring a, I was if I was to bring coleus indoors, where do you think I should put it in my apartment? Near a window would be great. Probably yeah. top of a bookshelf. This one's hanging down about two feet from the bottom of its container. Wow. Um, so you could grow coleus as a trailing plant. So there's trailing or more upright like bush varieties. Absolutely. And you're gonna take me to a more bush like variety now, right? Yep. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you showed us the strawberry drop coleus, which was that hanging basket plant. But if we were looking for more of an upright, you can see along this whole bed, you have planted this chocolate drop coleus, which is so beautiful. Get a load of those leaves. So this would make a better, smaller, upright house plant to be on a windowsill. Mm -hmm. And you think these indoors probably would need the brightest light section of our apartments? I'd say so. 
But the cool thing with coleus is there are so many different color varieties that if you wanted to bring some color into your urban jungle without being able to have like a flowering succulent or a flowering plant, this would be colorful foliage would be a perfect option. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is kind of blowing my mind because the pink polka dot plant or hypoestes was one of my first house plants. And it sat on my southern facing windowsill. It was very happy, but the leaves were maybe this big. Look at how big these leaves are when you put the plant outdoors where it's supposed to be. So talk to me about hypoestes and outdoors where you like to put them and how they thrive. So hypoestes are typically like traditionally known as house plants. Okay. Um, but these ones were kind of bred for the landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're about twice the size that you'll normally find. And obviously they've got huge leaves, tons of color. Um, Proven Winters has four different uh, color varieties, mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested. Yeah, what are the four um, colors? Because you had like a bright pink over there. Yep, so we've got pink, rose, red, and white. Yeah, the white is pretty wild too. Yep. I've never seen the white one. I've only had the pink ones. I think white's my favorite. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So this is another uh, really good option for a house plant. It's a uh, lemon coral sedum. Lemon so, coral sedum. Yeah, it feels amazing to touch. Um, does great in containers, great outdoors. Um, you can use it in full sun or full shade. Because um, I thought that sedum is mostly full sun, but this is a full shade option as well? Perennial sedums are mostly full sun. Those okay. are the big ones that get the flowers on them. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one is foliage only. Um, we sell it as an annual, uh, but it would be a great houseplant. Um, cool. Super easy to take care of, really doesn't need too much. Lemon coral sedum plant, friends. You heard it here first. Okay, Ian, I think this one might be my favorite of all the ones you've shown me so far. I have no idea what it is, so <laughs> what is it? I just know it's pretty and purple. It's pretty cool. This is called a strobilanthes, okay. uh, also known as Persian Shield. Um, it makes a great landscape plant. Um, gets about two to three foot tall. Um, but outside of a combination, it'll make a, it has a really nice habit, uh, so it'll look good kind of as a specimen plant in a pot. Okay. Um, but it'll make a pretty good house plant uh, with enough light. Um, it is kind of a full to part sun plant outside. Okay. Um, so you'll definitely want to keep it near a window. Okay. Um, so it, full sun, so bright sun. Yeah. Okay. As much as you can get it. Because if you see this gorgeous purple, oof, those are dreamy. That's dreamy foliage. So that gorgeous purple is going to need a little bit more light than a traditional normal green leaf. Mm -hmm. But plant friends, if you've got the sunlight, this is a really cool option to vary up your foliage selection. Holy moly. And in the sun, it like shines. It's like iridescent. Yeah, it is iridescent. It's unbelievable. Wow. Scratch Persian Shield. I'm over Persian Shield and I'm into Cerve <laughs> this plant, Cerveza and Lime. That's the one. This plant smells so unbelievable. Holy moly. It, why is it named Cerveza and Lime? Because uh, it smells basically like cerveza. Lime. Yeah, like the lime. It yeah. really does smell like a limey smell. Kind of citrusy, you, yeah. If you guys like scented geraniums, like my rose scented geranium, I love rubbing the leaves and smelling it. This would be so fun to have every morning. It's a fuzzy leaf and it smells. I cannot believe how fragrant this is. Yeah. So where do you use these outdoors? Oh, they're so fuzzy. I love how fuzzy they are. <laughs> outdoors, they do well in the ground, but I like to have them in a container like this where they're kind of at shoulder height so you okay. can smell them easier. Yeah. Um, and you can just put them, you know, everywhere around your patio and just make the whole thing smell nice. And what's their sun level? Uh, full sun outdoors, um, but indoors you can, you know, they can handle a little bit of shade. So you could do like a bright indirect kind of medium light if you needed to. Mm -hmm. This would be such a fun plant to have indoors. I can't wait to add this to my collection. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the hot tip. Absolutely. Ian, thank you so much for giving me some new options for plants I'm gonna bring home. I'm definitely bringing home this cerveza and lime, and I'll probably gonna I'm probably gonna bring home that Persian Shield as well. Um, we can buy all of them online. The links are below. Plant friends, if you're interested in bringing them home as well. But all of these plants are part of the Proven Winner brand. So what does it take to make a plant a Proven Winner? So all of our plants go through about three years of trialing and testing. Wow. Um, we have breeders all over the world who send us their favorite plants uh, for us to choose from. Um, here at Four Star, we have a research and development program uh, where they kind of trial some of the plants that get sent in to us. 
Um, a lot of the staff at Four Star, including me, get to like vote for our favorites. That's so cool. Uh, which is so much fun. Um, and so we do some of the testing and trialing here. Um, we trial all over the United States to try and figure out what plants will do well in different climates. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big operation, but it usually takes about three years for a plant to go from uh, breeder uh, to your door, basically. And they all get tested in the variety of gardens that you have here too, right? Yep. And you're displaying them, you're seeing how they look, you're seeing how they do in the ground, all of that kind of stuff. So three years to take this plant to market. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. So if you guys are interested in learning more about Proven Winners, you can check out all the links below. Thank you so much for this amazing tour. Thanks for coming. My, oh my God, my pleasure. And until next time, plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. Doom, 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 doom,